All right, I think we're ready to go. Um, first, thanks for everyone to come here to see my presentation today. My name is Lucas Rusak. Uh, I work on Cody in my spare time. Um, I have a few other colleagues here with me as well that uh, do it as well. Um, this is my actually first time being at FOSDEM, um, first time presenting at FOSDEM, so that's a really exciting opportunity for me. Um, there's a few parts to this presentation, um, and uh, we'll see what we got here. So, um, Next slide. There we go. Um, all right, so just a quick overview of what I'm going to be going over here. Um, problems that we're facing and what the actual uh, problems are, uh, how we uh, solve these problems, um, and then where we're going to go from here. So everything I'm presenting in here is uh, already in Kodi Master. Uh, it'll be in the version 18 release. Um, if you saw Martin's talk earlier, um, he uh, mentioned that there is the new uh, DRM backend. Uh, that's a big part of this. So I was actually planning on doing a demo, but I don't think I'm going to be doing it because uh, I, uh, the board I have was, only has HDMI out, and I don't have an adapter, and I don't even know if it would honestly work at this resolution anyway. But uh, we can maybe find something later to, to play with it. So. Um, just a bit of terminology that uh, I'd like to go over before uh, getting into it. There's, there's so many abbreviations in the uh, Linux kernel stuff, so uh, <clears throat> stuff you'll see throughout this. Uh, DRM KMS is the Direct Rendering Manager in a kernel mode setting. I assume most of you know what that is being in this uh, graphics dev room, but we'll touch on that a bit later. Uh, SBC being single board computer. Um, devices like Raspberry Pis, and uh, I brought a Dragon board here, but there's uh, plenty of other stuff out there. Um, system on a chip is a similar idea. Uh, V4L2 is the video for Linux 2 subsystem um, in the Linux kernel. And then uh, BSP being board support package, uh, it's something that vendors supply with their, uh, with their single board computers. Um, it's usually a static kernel release, and that's what you have to use. Um, and then RKMPP is the uh, rock chip uh, media process platform. So um, <clears throat> what is this actual problem that we see uh, today? Um, eh, so many new uh, single board computers come out all the time. Uh, there's now um, eight or nine top uh, SOC vendors that we see, um, all with like varying levels of support in the Linux kernel. Um, people buy these new boards on a whim and hope for them to work in, in uh, their applications. Uh, it's quite a big problem. Uh, it creates quite a lot of code maintenance, especially when there's uh, specific platfo platform-specific code in uh, in, in your application. So um, oftentimes you're stuck with the, the vendor's uh, board support package, um, which in a lot of cases is usually a really old kernel. I mean, Amlogic's kernel is based on 3.14, which is severely outdated by today's standards. So, um, And they, they really haven't done much to update that, but that's their, their thing. Um, a lot of these solutions use proprietary methods as well to do all the windowing stuff. So they provide you a thing and provide some documentation on how to use this blob, and you uh, write your code around it, and it does some magic inside it, and, and uh, hope it works. Um, but uh, they're usually all platform-specific, so they all require platform-specific wrappers around certain things. So uh, this becomes a huge maintenance burden. Um, I'll show you in a sec here uh, what I actually mean by that, but uh, 
It's, it's actually quite large. So currently in Kodi, as of the version 17 release, so the version that's already out, um, Raspberry Pi, Amlogic, and IMX6 support um, existed. Uh, varying degrees of success with kind of all of them, but uh, Raspberry Pi being pretty well, and it is a vendor-supplied kernel with uh, blobs to use it. Uh, Amlogic is, uh, in my opinion, a bit of a hack, but um, we're working on it. And then IMX6 uh, kind of just lost interest by people, and so as of... Uh, now, IMX6 has actually been ripped out of uh, Kodi, thanks to me. Um, we've actually rejected some PRs uh, for uh, specific code in, in Kodi, um, just because we didn't want to take on this maintenance burden anymore. There's uh, already not enough maintainers in Kodi for a lot of the, a lot of the work we do, and uh, in most areas, there's only one maintainer of, of some things. And, if that maintainer leaves, like with uh, IMX6, um, the code dies and uh, just uh, no one's there to save it. So um, this is a just a this is actually a bit of an old photo now. Of the, all the all the boards that I kind of have, I've I've accumulated quite a few since this. But um, I mean, supporting each single board is very difficult um, to cross compile uh, for each board takes a lot of time to burn it to a SD card and run it and on each board takes a lot of time um, so what we want to do is try and implement a way where um, we have a single uh, code path basically for use on all the different boards so um, this was platform specific code for IMX6. This uh, disk was ripped out. Um, bear in mind, these are just uh, simple uh, metrics. They include the header files and stuff too. But I mean, 3,700 lines of platform specific, specific code on a on a board that maybe a hundred people ran Kodi on is uh, was it wasn't great in our opinion. So. Um, we really needed to look in other methods. I mean, Raspberry Pi is even worse than this, but uh, there's nothing we can really do for that at the moment, and I'll kind of talk about that later. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just a rough example. Keep that in mind. I have some other stuff coming up as well for, for where we're going. So um, just an overview of kind of some of the stuff that I'll be covering, uh, how, how we solve this. We're using DRM. Um, I'll briefly talk about FFmpeg and how uh, some of the decoders support there helps us a lot. And then we we have this new thing called DRM Prime, um, is the new rendering method we use across some of these new boards. So uh, it's all pretty exciting stuff. It's all really new stuff. Um, and uh, I actually hope this maybe helps some other applications. Uh, figure out how to implement some of this stuff, because uh, when it's brand new technology, sometimes it's really difficult to figure it out on your own. And I have uh, quite a crew of guys that are all kind of working on this with me in various different areas, So, but some people might not. So, um, so DRM and KMS. Uh, DRM's the uh, display subsystem in, in the Linux kernel. Um, it's... Uh, still sort of relatively new, but um, most main uh, graphics systems have a upstream DRM driver, which is fantastic. So now in Kodi, any, basically any board that has a DRM driver um, can, can run Kodi, which is awesome. And I mean, most people think of uh, the DRM subsystem on all the big, the big uh, graphics platforms like Intel and um, NVIDIA and AMD and stuff, uh, but there's so many more as well. Uh, this uh, Dragon board runs on um, the MSM kernel driver. Um, it has an Adreno chipset in it. Um, it's really fantastic. Uh, Raspberry Pi recently gained a DRM driver. Um, we currently can't use it 
because of uh, reasons I'll get into. Um, IMX6 has a DRM driver, and uh, hopefully the upcoming IMX8 will soon too. Uh, all winner is varying levels of support. Um, once the H3 DRM driver merges, that would be really fantastic. And uh, Rockchip, um, I believe it's upstream, um, but uh, there's still a lot of stuff lacking in the upstream Rock, Rockchip stuff. But uh, Rockchip's board support package is based on 4.4, so it's not really that old yet. Um, so I'm I'm mainly focusing on all the embedded platforms. Um, I've I've tested it on all these platforms, uh, I, and including AMD and Intel, and uh, it can run. Um, I mean, I'm really relatively new to this scene anyway. Uh, I've only been working on this stuff for less than a year now. Um, I attended. Uh, the Embedded Linux conference last year in Portland. I met Mark Jaynes there, who gave a presentation earlier today, and he basically asked me why Cody doesn't run on the frame buffer on DRM. And I really didn't have an answer for him at the time, so uh, I went home and looked into it and uh, wrote the DRM framework for Cody, and, and that's where we are. So. If you have more interest in like learning about it in general, there's tons of stuff out there. This one uh, linked uh, presentation by Boris Brezelon is really fantastic. Um, that's where this photo is from as well. So, uh, yeah. So the implementation for DRM KMS is about 2,500 lines. Um, this is just the windowing in general. The uh, doesn't include decoding or rendering yet. Um, but 2,500 lines to run on all these different platforms is pretty great. It's, there's no platform-specific code in there. Um, it's designed to run on all the platforms. Um, there are some quirks between platforms, um, which I'll talk about a bit later. But um, really, it's general enough that it, it can run, so, which is really exciting. So. Um, <clears throat> then we get into video decoding and, and rendering, which is a huge issue. Um, again, in the past, all the video decoding on, on these chipsets are somehow using a binary blob that does some magic and then gives us a, a decoded frame after, and we have to do something with it. Um, it's very board specific. It's not very nice to work with. so. Um, what can we do about that? And there's a, there's a couple things, actually. Um, main, main thing I'll ta be talking about is the Video for Linux 2 subsystem in uh, the Linux kernel, which is designed to do this. It um, allows access to the hardware video decoders on the board if there's a driver, a Video for Linux 2 driver, available for that board. Um, which there is actually quite a lot. Uh, the IMX6 drivers there, this, uh, the Qualcomm uh, Venus driver is already upstream. Uh, MediaTek has one. I think High Silicon has one. Um, and then All Winners is in the works, but there's some kind of flux in the V4L2 subsystem right now. So, um, so the main issue is, is on all these embedded low power platforms, how can we take a decoded frame and send it to the scan out um, without copying to get maximum performance, because that's um, the main thing we're looking for on these uh, low power systems. On your, on your i7 at home, it really doesn't matter, but um, on a little Raspberry Pi, it's a it, single core Raspberry Pi, it's a huge thing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the DRM system actually allows us to do this in a really interesting way. Um, <clears throat> this is the this is the uh, decoder um, and renderer that we wrote in Cody uh, with help by uh, Jonas in the crowd there. Um, it's 750 lines total code. Uh, I don't really expect it to get much bigger than that uh, until uh, a little bit in the future when HDR stuff is kind of calmed down, but. Uh, that, that's all we need. And the nice thing about this as well is it is platform agnostic. 
all the work is uh, off put into FFmpeg to uh, do, do some of the heavy lifting for us and to deal with some of the uh, little bits of uh, uh, platform stuff that, that we need to do. So this, uh, the, the code really doesn't, there's a few areas here where I have code on the screen. It's not really a big deal. It's really just filler. Um, it's hard to take code out of context and understand what it means, but <clears throat> this is an important part of uh, FFmpeg. This has been in, in uh, FFmpeg Master for, I think, only about four or five months now. Um, and this is a big part of what we use. So what happens is um, we basically will be getting um, something back from FFmpeg, uh, I'll just show here. Um, we take a frame, send it to FFmpeg. The specific decoder in FFmpeg decodes that frame either using V4L2 or in the case of Rockchip, um, it's uh, RKMPP. And then we're requesting a certain pixel format back from FFmpeg. And um, using this AV uh, DRM uh, frame descriptor, we get back. Uh, FFmpeg puts the decoded frame in a, in a memory buffer, and it stays in that memory buffer uh, for good. So what we actually get back from FFmpeg is this AVDRM frame descriptor, which contains a file descriptor for the memory location of the, deco deco the decoded frame, and just some other information about that frame, like the size and um, the pixel format and, uh, and whatnot. So, uh, we get we get these two these two things back. Um, what we do with this <clears throat> is uh, is really interesting. So uh, we get the frame back. Uh, we we can unpack this uh, sort of container uh, that is AVDRM frame descriptor, and um, and use it. And what we do is we typically in um, in FFmpeg we get back a frame in the NV12 pixel format. Um, V4L2 does support some other ones, but NV12 is kind of what we're using now. Um, and what's unique about all these embedded platforms is that um, they're designed to use with uh, these certain uh, pixel formats. So you can uh, send it directly to a plane itself and, and be shown on the plane. Um, so all these embedded platforms support NV12 in their, in their output planes. And um, what we do is um, uh, we get, we get the, a handle, basically, from, from the file descriptor for the memory buffer. And then, and then we add, add the frame buffer to it. This, this is kind of the same thing you would do with uh, regular OpenGL stuff as well. But we, we're taking... Um, the direct region in the, or the frame from the direct region in the memory uh, to access it. So once we a uh, add the frame buffer, we get a frame buffer ID, and then we can let the DRM subsystem do all the work for us. Um, we pass the frame buffer ID into an atomic mode set. Um, it just includes some properties, the width and height and uh, location of the frame, where it should be displayed. Um, and and, uh, and then we just do the atomic commit. Um, and this is really nice. Uh, it, it's, it's actually a very simple process. As you saw, it was 750 lines of, of code to do this. And um, it, it, makes, it makes our life really easy. Um, this is what I'm talking about with planes. <clears throat> this is a, a sample output from the Dragon Board using the mode, uh, mode test utility that's in the lib libdrm uh, test suite. And uh, there's a lot of different pixel formats there that the planes um, support. So the next thing we come across is how do we um, support multiple um, planes and, and do the compositing for it. Um, but in the DRM subsystem, that it does that for us. We just have to set the planes ourselves. So in the, two, in the example here, uh, the top plane is, uh, is uh, type 1, which means it's a primary plane. And then the bottom one is a type 0, which is an overlay plane. 
And there's actually a type 2, which is a hardware cursor, but we don't use that at all. So um, both these uh, planes support NB12, uh, as well as a, a ton of other modes. Um, and uh, so we use these two planes to our advantage. Um, I, I made these, these graphics. I, I, I took me a bit of time. I don't really do much for, uh, in GIMP anymore, but um, I was really happy with that. <laughs> uh, so what we actually do in, in Cody now is uh, we, get a, we get a frame and we pass it to the, the plane for, for video playback. And the video playback really wants to be in the primary plane. And we want to do this because the overlay plane is made to be in front of the primary plane. And uh, so co we put the Kodi GUI into the overlay plane. And, uh, and then the DRM system and the, the hardware composites it and outputs it together. So in both of these, there's a one with the black frame. That's just the, hard, uh, the hardware cursor frame, which we don't use. Uh, it's just there to uh, represent. Um, but in the first example with video playback, we show that um, uh, Cody, the Kodi GUI is actually shifted to the overlay, uh, overlay plane while the uh, uh, video is playing back in the, in the primary plane. Um, this, is a, this is what it kind of allows us to have such great performance. Um, when the Kodi GUI isn't shown at all, we can completely disable the plane. Um, so it's rendering nothing, so we might as well just disable it completely. Um, and then once the video stops, we can actually shift the uh, uh, Kodi GUI from the overlay back to the primary plane. And I actually just need to do that because of uh, there's certain um, transparency issues and things that happen when you leave it in the overlay plane. So, um, This all, this all happens in a single atomic commit. Um, that's what's really convenient about doing it. There is actually an atomic attribute called Z position, um, but it's not widely supported in the uh, mainline kernel. Um, it actually tells the hardware to do the, comp the uh, composition to move the planes around manually, but um, we don't want to really support something that's not there for every platform yet. So. Uh, we do it this way, and it works uh, really fantastic. So, um, There's uh, some other issues with, with doing this, of course, uh, that I've ran into uh, using all the various hardware that I have. Um, the IMX6 device in particular, uh, the DRM driver, or the hardware has um, uh, a hardware scaler, but it's not plumbed into the, the DRM pipeline. So unfortunately, there is no plane scaling. Um, so you cannot play a, a 720p video on a, on a 1080p screen on, I, on the IMX6. Um, it'll just say there's a size mismatch, and it'll fail. Um, but on Rockchip and uh, the Dragon Board, it, it works just fine. Uh, there are things we can kind of do about that, and there's a lot of stuff I've looked into and how to, how to solve that. And all of them are sort of complicated. Um, it would be nice if there was just a scaler involved, but um, ups, uh, higher ups tell me that even if there, it, there, there, we can access something, but it'll probably have to be done through FFmpeg instead, so not really that great. Um, and then the other thing is when doing, when, when putting a frame into the, the plane directly, uh, we can't use uh, GL shaders, which uh, are a big part of Kodi, so doing things like scaling and, and color correction and uh, deinterlacing and stuff. Um, I think V4L2 and RKMPP both support deinterlacing, but um, just just because. So, so some sort of alternative solutions that we've kind of had to come up with, um, and this is really only spurred out of that that IMX6 board that that doesn't support plane scaling. Um, we had to look into some other solutions and. The other solutions all involve uh, using OpenGL, um, and in this in this case, OpenGLES. So, um, which also it, it involves writing another renderer for it or another uh, code path. But 
it's not such a bad thing. Um, a lot of the code can kind of be reused, but um, it's not it's not ideal. But we kind of have to work with what we get. So, um, so what happens in this case is that we actually get the the, the file descriptor from FFmpeg, and and uh, we <laughs> import it into into GL, and uh, and use it from there. And then we can do ip image manipulation on it. Um, in, in that case, um, it, it works. Uh, I have it working on the Dragon board. Um, uh, the performance is still great. Uh, it's the problem. The main problem with it is that it it requires GLS3 um, because of the, some of the texture support that is needed for it. And most of these small ARM boards only support GLS2, which is really uh, unfortunate, but that's again life. Um, so there are some other things that we can do with GLS2. Um, there's this GL texture external OES call uh, that we can use, and I, I've sort of worked on it a little bit. I never actually got it fully working. Um, uh, it's it, it's working in uh, MPV, I believe, but uh, um, again, it, it depends on the the hardware. And uh, if if the GLES driver actually supports importing of NV12 format or not, um, which IMX6 doesn't, well, I might fix something for you. That would be great. I know uh, IMX6 actually uh, supports using YUY, uh, uh, yeah, YUY V uh, outputting from V4L2 and the and the plane support and in GL. But I, I just haven't got around to really testing that yet. So. No, we, we will have NV12 support in front of us. Great. OK. So, um, but again, it, yeah, it's one of those things where it depends platform to platform if, if, that's, if that's a problem. Um, in case people don't really know, uh, regular OpenGL can't uh, import NV12 or certain uh, like, uh, planar formats. So the reason it's required with GLES for the one method is because uh, uh, some of the texture support that we have to use, um, we basically break the NV12 in it, image into, into it, their own planes in GL and then um, use shaders to sample, sample it from there. So um, I have some code that kind of covers it, but it's not really... Uh, important because again it's just out of context but uh, so here we're actually just importing in uh, uh, R8 texture in in the in the Y plane and and then in the UV plane we import a GR88 texture uh, and yeah those those two are the problem because converting from these these uh, the DRM format to a GL format uh, requires a certain level of open GL which is just unfortunate. Um, this was actually kind of this method was actually kind of copied from some other code that we have in Cody right now as well because this is the way um, that VAPI works um, in in Cody because with VAPI we get an NV12 frame and we import it into GL uh, using this. So uh, very similar code. Uh, it does work, um, but again there's some caveats, so we don't really. Uh, don't really know exactly how we want to move forward here. Um, if if this is something we do want to implement or not, um, and if we do, this would be a fallback method for um, the direct to plane method uh, that we are using currently. So uh, something to talk about in the future, but that's that's just how it is. So, and then and then we just take the the. Um, imported images and convert it to textures. So um, the other method is the, the OES method, and that's specific to GLES. Um, that's where we can import NV12 directly. But um, again, there's some issues with that, so it's, it's a little difficult. Um, so. Uh, I just, there was a couple of platforms that I wanted to go over. Um, Raspberry Pi is unfortunately not really going down this path as of yet. Um, 
upstream there is the VC4 driver, which is really great. It works fantastic. Uh, but when using VC4, you get no, you get no video de decoding support um, because you have to go through their magic blob, which uh, hopefully I one day would, uh, will happen. But um, as of now, it, it's not. So we still have to have uh, pl that platform-specific code for, for Raspberry Pi. Um, there's no real signs of that changing, but um, that's how it is. Uh, AmLogic is kind of the same way. And it's really too bad because there is so much AmLogic uptake in, uh, in uh, people buying devices. They're so cheap. You can buy them for $20 or $30 and, and have Cody working on them, uh, which is fantastic. But you're, you're so stuck in using uh, all the problems that come along with their code and the nightmare that is uh, AM codec. And, and uh, yeah, so there has been an uh, effort to create a DRM driver for AmLogic, which is fantastic. It was done by B-Libra. Um, we, we talk with them quite a lot. Um, the problem becomes, after this, the video decoding again. So we, we've been talking with AmLogic, and apparently there's some work that they're doing to do either a V4L2 implementation or, or FFmpeg in implementation, but I have yet to actually see anything, so I don't. I don't really know. And then even then with AmLogic, it, they don't have a, uh, a GBM compatible library for libmally. So it's, there's so many little things that are problems with these platforms. But all winners almost there, which is great. Um, all winners kind of had a, I don't know, uh, interesting past. Um, but I, I have Cody running on an orange pie. Uh, there's just no hardware decoding support yet for it. But as soon as that driver is in, um, which, I mean, there was the Kickstarter the other day to do the uh, all-winner V4L2 driver. Um, and apparently it's there. It's just uh, it needs reworking for the new uh, V4L2 um, rework that's kind of happening right now. Um, Rockchip is working. Uh, it's all there. There's a lot of work going into the Rockchip kernel to, to support various stuff. But the nice thing about some of these boards is they will be able to support 4K at 60 <coughs> FPS, which is really awesome. And these do uh, uh, H.265 as well. Um, as, so they're really up to date in their stuff. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite mainline kernel, but there is a lot of stuff being shifted to there. It's just uh, some of the stuff specific with the GPU and, and whatnot that is uh, stuck in the rock chip specific kernel. So, And uh, this Qualcomm board is, is absolutely fantastic, apart from some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, the software support is, is amazing. This board runs on all um, open source um, um, <laughs> software now. Uh, it's completely upstream. Uh, it's running on mainline kernel. There's still a couple things missing, but it's not really needed for our cases. And uh, yeah, if they would just make it a proper uh, board layout and uh, <laughs> power plug and uh, and uh, whatever else, but and the Android partition scheme is really bad, but that's life. So. Uh, this uh, this works. I would really like to show it, but yeah. And then and then IMX6 as well is uh, is all up main mainline as well, which is really great. Uh, there's kind of mixed mi mixed success with this because the IMX6 platform is so old. Um, it only really supports H.264 and stuff anyway. Um, I really look forward to uh, IMX8, which is kind of be it's already kind of been announced, but Hopefully the first board starts showing up in the next few months, which is really great. And IMX8 will have uh, H.265 and VP9 and all the all the good stuff. So um, future stuff. Uh, unfortunately, the the V4L2 the V4L2 um, uh, DRM Prime work is not quite mainline. Uh, I've already submitted patches for it, but they do need some work because they're quite invasive. Um, 
it's actually a minimal patch. I think it's like 30 lines or something like that, but uh, it's still something that needs to go in. The rock chip supports in FFmpeg already, so that's totally fine. And then so the only other stuff kind of missing from Cody is going to be HDR stuff. Um, but that needs to kind of be solved in the mainline kernel and how they want to want to do that stuff anyway. So um, what's nice about this is it's it's already done all in Cody. So now whenever the boards come out and then the drivers are implemented for them, it'll just it'll just work. So it's not like we have to backport stuff into Cody version 18 when it is released um, to allow support for these other platforms. So. Um, not going to do a demo. I don't have the uh, adapter here, but that's fine. So, um, any questions about anything, really? Go ahead. Uh, for scanning, you were asking earlier, but uh, there is a lip placebo, which is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, you may want to use that for GPU scaling and high quality GPU scaling. Yeah. Uh, it, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it can uh, do what else can do. Okay. Um, so it's kind of just a comment about using uh, VL, uh, I think it's done by M player or MPV or who is? Yeah, M player. So MPV. Um, it, they have a new library called libplacebo. It's, uh, it's meant to do a bunch of like um, color correction and all sorts of other stuff, kind of as a single framework and whatnot. Uh, it's possibly something we might look into, um, but we have certain maintainers that really like to avoid external libraries and things. But um, we'll see. It, it just, yeah. Uh, there is kind of early support in Cody for doing HDR stuff. At least some of the pipelining is there. Um, it's just getting it actually to all the way to the screen is kind of where we're at right now. So, yeah. Um, anyone else? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, any benchmarks before and after? Uh, I don't actually have any benchmarks other than the fact that uh, without uh, the kind of V4L2 stuff on, on Kodi, it just won't run on platforms like IMX6. Um, using the proprietary method works, but it's basically doing the same thing. So you, you, could, uh, you could play kind of standard def playback using software decoding, but, but here you... Uh, actually can play full 1080p, 60 frames. So, yeah. Anyone else? Any other questions, like, just in general about Cody or anything? Cool. You mentioned about the IMX6 support, that it's great, and then IMX8 is coming. It's going to be a big delta for the, because everything seems to be mainline for yeah, un unfortunately, there's quite a bit of work still to do for IMX8, as far as I know. Um, the, the hardware video decoder is a completely different chipset, so the V4L2 driver is, needs to be completely implemented from scratch. Um, apparently, there's great documentation for the IMX8 chip, though, so hopefully it'll be done in a kind of relatively quick time period. Um, there's been patches already for Mesa for IMX8 that are um, on their way to being merged soon. And then, uh, and then they kind of have to hook it up in uh, the IMX uh, DRM driver. So, yeah. So, close, but we'll see. It depends when boards come out, too. Um, the only one I'm really aware of for consumer purchase is uh, there's a, a board called the WAN board, which is going to be based on IMX 8, but it's available for pre-order only right now and I think comes out in a few months. So, yeah. <laughs> um, that's a really tough question. Uh, so I actually, uh, I'm actually not only part of Cody, I am part of a project called LibreLEC. Um, it's a built from scratch Linux distribution just meant to run Cody. Um, and currently our, our biggest use base is, is Raspberry Pi still. Uh, Raspberry Pi is still an awesome platform for the, for the money you get. It's been like continually tweaked like since it, since it came out. Um, we have guys working with us from the Raspberry Pi Foundation to 
to work and improve it all the time. So uh, I, I think Raspberry Pi is great. Unfortunately, it's a little behind now because there's so many other boards that are coming out. But um, it, I have really strong opinions about some of the boards coming out, and I, um, I don't really need to uh, cloud it with some of this stuff. So yeah. All right. Anyone else? No? Is it uh, HDMI to VGA? I mean, we can give it a go. I have n I've never ran it on that low of a resolution and never used an adapter before, so it, it could work. It could not. There, I think there was before, but I don't see it before. So You can... Uh, So aim for 16 to 9 ratio, if you can. I, on, I, I can't change anything until it's running, uh, but yeah. Do your best. <laughs> and it, that's, that's if it'll run anyway, so. No idea. It's running, but there's yeah. I don't I don't know if it's the adapter or what. So um, yeah. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for coming. And uh, yeah. <laughs>